Lisa, and um, welcome to the Gardener's Workshop show, Flower Friends. And today's show, we're going to be talking about which cool flowers we direct seed in the garden and how I do that. We're actually going to show you. And you're going to see what's blooming on the farm. And y'all, there are so many flowers. Um, we have an in-app drawing for one lucky viewer is going to win a prize. And then, of course, we have the live Q&A um, at the end of the show that we um, collect the questions. Um, and so to do the questions, you just do the at Lisa in the comment and post your question. And then the team will gather those up and select a couple and I'll answer those at the end of the show, right? But before we get started, please hit that share button that's on the bottom right hand um, side of your app and let your friends know that you're here and invite them to come over. And a little bit of housekeeping, please everybody that has an account, if you've ever placed an order, please go in and double check your email. Sometimes the method of payment that you use actually generates a bogus type of email that we can't reach you on, so we can't send you a shipping tracking ticket um, and that kind of thing. So please go in and check your email and your phone number in case we need to reach out to you about one of your orders. Now, if you're watching us on social media, I am so glad that you're here today. But what you need to know is that we also have a phone app and it is totally free. You can just head over to your phone's app store, search Gardener's Workshop, download it. It literally only takes a few seconds and you could pop back over here again. And when you're in that, you can do things like build a favorites list, you can watch the replays, and you can participate in the lively conversation that's going on in the comments. Um, as well as, friends, you can enter the giveaway, right? So now each week on the show, we always seem to sell out of something. So if you go to a product to purchase it and put it in your cart and it says out of stock, um, get on the wait list, you might wanna do that because sometimes the team behind the scenes is bringing literally stock over from our big website here into the app. So you'll just get a little notification when that actually happens. So before we, so can I show my flowers now? Okay, so we're doing something a little different. Um, Suzanne and I shot our master class this week um, for my private club. If you didn't know that I have a club, I do. You can head over to thegardenersworkshop.com anytime um, and check that out. It's, it's right there on the menu. Um, so we shot the September master class, which was fall flowers. And we topped that master class off by Suzanne made five different bouquets and I wanna show them to you. So this is one of the bouquets that she made, and she made them on screen and showed just how easy it is, and the foundation of each was the same. We use hydrangeas, so we have that one. And then look at this one, y'all. Look how beautiful, all this greenness. Oh, look how pretty that is. Then we have another one that's kind of in those fall. This was more of our market size bouquet and look how pretty that is. And then this one, how pretty. And this last one, which was her favorite, which was the reds, and look at the blue, y'all. You'll see that blue flower up close a little bit sooner. A little bit, in just a few more minutes here. Look how pretty, I think this is definitely my favorite one. All right, friends, now I promised you a giveaway, and once again, we are giving away a $25 store credit. Again, you have to be in the app to actually um, participate, so hit that button that's up at the top, I think, left or top right of your app, and that'll put you on the list, and we will pull at the end of the show for one lucky live viewer, and you do have to be here to actually um, get that. Now, because we are still... Where's, where'd it go? Here it is. We are still celebrating 10 years of cool flowers, friends. Can you believe it's been 10 years since my first book, book came out? We are still partying over here. So um, today's deal of the day is 20% off here in the app only on the cool season hardy annual category of seeds. That means all the in-stock seeds that are cool season packets 
are 20% off today. You don't have to use a coupon. The sale will automatically be applied. And friends, there is no better time than to get all of your cool flower seeds than this weekend. And that'll be available until Sunday at 8 a.m. And that's only here in the app. That is not available over on our big website. And um, so friends, let's start it off with my books. And I will tell you, I've been talking about the books so much in the last two weeks, trying to help people grasp that whole succession planting and warm season and cool. This book, The Cut Flower Handbook, which is 240 pages long, has 225 beautiful images, really takes you by the hand and teaches you how a cut flower garden works all the steps, how to succession plant, and then how to do it all. Plus, it includes 66 featured flowers. 41 of those flowers are cool flowers, y'all. So I would love to sign a book for you, and this also is an amazing reference tool, as well as when you purchase it from us, the bonus is that you get the flowers that didn't make the book. So would really love to sign one of those for you. Then, of course, my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, um, also comes with a bonus when you purchase it from us, and that is a video book study. It's kind of like the backstory on the book. And this book is not about growing vegetables. It's about why flowers are so significant to your vegetable patch by all the creatures that they attract and bring into the garden. And this really covers my methodology of gardening and farming without using pesticides, right? So this is a really great book. That's a great book for somebody just getting started in gardening and they aren't a, a, a hardcore cut flower gardener yet and they're still in vegetables, that will push them over the edge. Then of course, we always offer my book, Cool Flowers, which is the book that started it all, right? Um, while this is written for the home gardener um, based on my years of experience as a flower farmer, easily adaptable to a flower farm. This is the basics. This is the first step. And this book also comes with a free video book study when you purchase the book from us. And I would love to sign a book for you. So today's tip of the day is we're talking about direct seeding cool flowers in the fall. Um, and that would, what we mean by that is that that means you're planting seeds straight in the garden, right? Um, and so these are some of the questions that I often hear from folks. Um, so this is a question. I missed my seed starting window for transplants. Can I direct sow instead? So folks that think they missed their time to start a plant inside to plant out, thinks that perhaps if they direct sow the seed straight in the garden, that'll help. And in fact, it's not really that way at all. Seeds need warmth to actually break dormancy and sprout. And if it's already too late for you to plant your transplants or to start them, chances are you've missed that window too, as well as seeds are really a little bit of a slow grower out in the garden. So that's really not a good solution to that problem. You know, sowing seeds in the garden and planting transplants as close to your optimal time as possible is the real key to success with cool flowers. Another question we hear is how can I tell if a seed should be started indoors or sown directly in the garden? And that is a great question. Um, so for us, on our seed packet, on our website, and in all of my books, we always tell you which way. And if it actually says something like, plant seeds directly in the garden or start indoors, that means you can really do them both ways, but the way that I find the easiest is always listed first. Um, so you have to find out which method is preferred by that seed. And what that really means is that's the easiest way to get it to sprout successfully right? So it's not really up to you. It's up to what the seed needs conditions to actually get it to sprout. So for me as a commercial grower, we only direct seed in the garden in the fall. I don't direct seed anything in spring or summer. Um, and you know, it's just those cool season hardy annuals and it's not all of them. So why don't we do, um, this is another really common question, why don't we direct seed stuff in the spring and in the summer? Um, so it's about weed pressure. Um, so the weeds grow so quick and so fast 
that it's just very labor intensive to keep it actually, to keep your planting bed actually clean, right? Um, and in the fall, we have a little bit better chance of that. So we only direct seed those cool flowers that actually prefer to have their seeds planted directly out in the garden, meaning I know which ones those are based on the information on the seed packet, right? Um, and so we plant at the same time for direct seeding as you do transplants. And that is six to eight weeks before your first frost. And that gives plants the opportunity to get established or if you're planting that seed at that time, it gives that seed six to eight weeks to actually sprout and grow into a little baby plant that's gonna get ready to go through winter. And again, I'll just add here, we're only fall planting those cool season hardy annuals that are winter hardy in our zone, right? So some of the things that I do that make me so much better at this than I was 28 years ago when I got started, right, is I plant so many more seeds than what people think. Um, so you need to have, if you're direct seeding, you have to overplant to have a good stand of plants by the time that this little steps are over, right? Um, and we also plant our rows um, far enough apart that I can easily cultivate, meaning using my stand-up hoe, which you can find those over on our big website. Um, I can hoe about every 10 to 14 days until winter really sets in and gets cold and everything goes dormant. We do not thin our direct sown seedlings until very early spring. For me, that's usually like first of March when we're having warm afternoons maybe. And when I mean warm, it's sunny and 50 degrees outside and these cool season hardy annuals will show signs of growth. That's when I start thinning. So which seeds to fall direct sow? Stand by because we are gonna go through those um, here in just a minute. But first, we're gonna do a direct seeding demonstration right here inside the building, y'all. All right, so we have filled a little tray here with some soil. So just imagine this is a garden bed out in the garden and I wanna add a great little hack tip. Um, when you're sowing seeds out in the garden, it's even more important to have a really nice seed bed. And if, you, if your soil, and you're still working on it and it's not quite what you think it should be, you wanna know what I do? Is I will buy a bale of potting soil, not peat moss, potting soil, and put about a two inch topper on top of my beds and that's what I plant my seeds into. That gets you a great start and then those roots will go right down into your soil, but that's just a great kind of tip on how to do that. Now I use our Japanese hand hoe or the stand up hoe to do this next job. I pull a little trough. And so let's just imagine that this itself is a bed. I would have three troughs in here, right? We're just gonna pull one. And then I'm gonna plant my seeds. And I typically, when I'm direct sowing, fill my palm up with some. Now, I picked a pelleted seed so y'all can see them when I drop them in the soil. Um, and so I am gonna plant the seeds. Did you wanna do something? No, you can only see to here. Okay, so I've pulled the trough and I'm gonna use these pelleted seeds just so you can see them. This is not, there is not a direct sown seed that I fall plant that's pelleted. I just, but this is just for demonstration. I literally just put a few in my fingers and I just rub my fingers back and forth, dropping a seed and you get a little bit better of this after you start doing it. I'm dropping a seed about every inch or so. Now, most of these plants literally are gonna be thinned down to one plant about every four to six inches. And yes, you have to over sow that much. Now, the other piece of information you need when you're at this point is, does the seed get covered with soil or not? Many of them do and many of them don't. You have to actually know that before you get to this. So let's just assume I'm gonna do part of this covered and part not. So let's look at this head part right here. So the seeds are sown in the bottom of this trough. If they did not need, if they need light to germinate, which means you do not cover them, I would just firmly, 
firm them in, you want to be sure they're down in the soil, right? Not just sitting on the surface that wind can catch them. And that's all you do for that. Now, down here, let's say this particular seed says needs darkness to sprout or cover it with an eighth of an inch of soil. I literally, using my hoe, would just scrape a little bit of soil from the side of the trough and do the very same thing. This job is very easy to do out in the garden with a hoe when you have more of a real size. And I just put this down in the trough and that's how I firm out in the garden. So that's how I direct sow. By making this trough, you now have a place to direct all the water. Do not water the entire bed. You're just gonna water that trough. And we would do that about every day if it's dry conditions out until the seedlings really get up and get started, okay? So that is how we direct sow. All right, so let's look at one of our customer's favorites. Um, you want me just to hold this here? Um, so this is one of our very original seed collections. Suzanne and I made this back in about probably 2006. It was one of the very first ones. Um, it's called the Cool, cool Hardy Spring Bloomin' Seed Collection. It has a diagram on the back. All the seeds in here are Cool Season Hardy Annuals um, and they are all can be direct sown, right? And this has additional instructions inside and it's six individually packed um, packages. So this is also 20% off. So it's regularly $22.95. So you're gonna get about $4.50 off that price. So, and this is a great gift. This is a great way to help somebody actually get jump started into gardening, right? And so this is the dry organic fertilizer that we actually use on the farm here. Um, and so it has the directions right on here. It's three pounds to 100 square feet, and that's about seven and a half cups. This is a four pound bag, it's $14.95, and this is a um, processed organic chicken litter fertilizer. Um, and it's like, dry, it's pretty easy to put down, and that's what we, every time we prepare a bed, that's what we actually put in the bed. So here's that hoe you just saw me use, and it comes in a left-hand model and a right-hand model. And we use this for so many things on this farm, not to mention just weeding, thinning, planting seeds, grading mulch, um, and every hoe head works the same. With the hoe head flat on the ground, sunk about a half to one inch deep, and you pull it with the blade flat. That allows you to just go through, think about cutting a stick of butter, long ways with a butter knife, right? You're just cutting through like that. Most people do it like this. They put it down and scrape and they just, the blade is then scraping and making piles of dirt. And that's not what you want to do. So use the blade flat. Right and left hand model, it's $24.95 and you will um, be asked what you would like when you get to it. You want to do these? Sure. Okay, so Susie Q is going to tell you about hey it. Hey guys. So we have our super cushy pad, kneeling pad. This is my favorite. I used it just recently to remodel my bathroom. And it is 15 inches by 20 inches, two inches thick, lightweight, about 20 ounces. And it has a handle so you can carry it. But it is so squishy and soft. It just, I've never ever seen one this big and comfortable. It really is good on your knees. Made in the USA, it's $42.95 and Everybody needs to have one, especially if you're my age. Next we have the label bundle. So this is our favorite garden marker. This writes on wood, glass, um, and it lasts and lasts. It comes with three, two different sizes. It has the 12 inch and 18 inch um, markers, a pack of each. And this is what you want to write on when you're planting seeds out, especially so you'll know what's there come spring. This was out in the garden for a couple of seasons, sorry, upside down, and you can still see it. Regular Sharpies will wash away like in a month. So if you need something long-term marked in your garden, this is the way to go. The label and marker bundle is $24.80. And, um, and tip, we scratch out and use the other side when we're done. And when you're done with that, you can paint over it and then still mark it and continue to use those. Next up, we have the floating row cover. 
So this is the floating row cover that you see Lisa using in the garden all the time. It's about four to five degree temperature um, protection, but it protects from the wind. We have a lot of wind here. So this really puts like a little um, windbreaker on your plants like you would put on your child if they were going outside and it was windy. Air and light get through it, rain goes through it. We do pull it back if we hand water and then put it back on, but um, it really makes a big difference getting your seeds to germinate. It helps the moisture stay in the soil so seeds germinate much better with the row cover on it. Now this is a six and a half foot by 50 foot and it's $26.95 and we would not garden without it. We use, guess what? Anchor bags to hold it down. Next up are our anchor bags. These come in a 10 pack for $10.95 and we fill these with soil, sand, or rocks, whatever you have around. 15 pounds is what we usually try to go for and we measure one, take it in the house, measure it. Once we find out how much it takes to fill it, then we just know how to fill the other bags. These, you wanna protect it from sunlight when you're not using them, but they really last and they help the row cover stay down. You can use them on tarps, um, anything that you want to not blow away and they really hold up. And the anchor bags are 10.95. Next up we have the nitrile gloves. I just took mine off a second ago. We live in these. These are lightweight, they have nitrile palms, they don't have any latex in them, and they are so grippy that you can do anything in them. We have cousins that do um, needlepoint, you milk a cow. I use them to work around the house, to work in the garden, and these are the lighter weight ones. They are unisex sized, so I take a medium and I have a large hand for a woman. Um, so you want to get your size accordingly. These come in extra small up to large, and um, they come in an assortment of colors, and a four pack is $24.95, what a deal, or you can get a single pair for $7.95. Remember what's coming up. Everybody loves these, get them for your gifts. So next up we have the Tough Glove. The Tough Glove is just like the Touch Glove, except it has a double coating of nitrile on the palm, and they come in black, which men do prefer, and these are sized the same way. I have a large woman hand and I wear a medium. This goes up from small up to extra large. So if you have a big guy with big hands, then the extra larges would be perfect for him. Men golf, work on their cars. Um, this would be great for moving wood or concrete, or anything heavier duty than you'd want your garden gloves to be doing. Really protects your hands and the thicker coating really um, lets you do that heavy duty stuff. Same price, one pair $7.95 or a four pack for $24.95. Get them for gifts, people love them. Next up we have our gauntlets. These used to be called the rose gloves. And these are sized the same way. I also wear a medium in these and I have a large hand for a woman. And these are made of a man-made material. So you can put these in the washing machine and wash them. They're great for any critter that has thorns, birds. We rescue birds with these. Poison ivy, because you can throw them in the washing machine. You can get poison ivy on this and just toss them in the wash. The gauntlet gloves, everybody should have a pair. I use them all the time. $37.95, they come from size small up to extra large. And again, perfect gift. So next up we have our weather stick. Our weather stick is so fun. This is made of balsam wood, the same thing that they make divining rods of. You see them going out looking for water and the little rods go back and forth. It has a little hole at the top and you just simply find a pole or um, a beam that you can view this from your house outside. You attach this to it so that you can see it from the side. And ours, I have seen touch the post it's attached to when the weather is bad outside. When the weather's good, it turns up. And of course, this one's been inside in the air conditioning, so it's kind of this way about it. But the weather stick is $10.95. People don't believe it works. You give it to one person, everybody they know is gonna want one. Um, it is one of our favorites, so be sure to get those as your gifts. Kitchen compost bucket. This is the perfect size to go under your kitchen sink and it has a nice tight lid so that when you're composting, it seals in any smells that you might have. But we, I will say, you should not be putting anything in your compost bucket that causes smell. No meats, 
nothing like that that is going to create a smell and you want to dump it out a couple of times a week so all of your greens anything that you um, chop up we don't put banana peels in ours and any rinds you want to cut up very very finely so that they break down quicker the kitchen compost is $15.95 also works great to put bird seed in and other storage things too it's just a really dog nice bucket. yeah and dog food too it's a really nice bucket all right, next up is Lisa with Soul Blocking. Hey friends. So we had to include our Soul Block Maker Kit this week also, right? Number one customer favorite, and we are heading straight into Soul Blocking Seed Starting Time. So the Soul Block Maker Kit comes with the small blocker, which is the one that I use most of the time. It also includes a six quart bag of our ready-made mix. And this bag makes about 500 of those individual little blocks, so it's super compact. This kit also includes the Seed Starting Made Easy online course that takes you from the beginning to the actual end um, of soil blocking, as well as direct sowing, planting sunflowers in the plug tray, as well as the commercial um, soil blocker, the Swift blocker. So everything you need is in this course that comes with this kit then you get to select either three um, cool season hardy annual or three warm season um, tender annual seeds. So three packs of seeds come, as well as it comes with five of our reusable foam trays. Y'all, these are not made to be disposable. We use these foam trays year after year. For instance, look, these are my little broccoli plants that I have growing up. We just use the trays over and over and over again. So it comes with five of these trays. Um, the little seed pan that you see me use it has no static electricity. The toothpicks, the blocker, the choice of your free seeds, as well as the soil block, um, seed starting made easy course. All of this for eighty nine. <laughs> no, they're they're being silly, y'all. All for eighty nine ninety five. So you're really set up to actually soil block. You know, a soil block's making your own little containers, y'all. It saves so much time, money, and it just grows a great transplant. So the other thing that we use a ton of this time of the year is the biodegradable film that I use here on my farm. Um, and we punch holes in it on screen for you to see just how easy it is. This is not anything like landscape fabric. This is a corn byproduct. It is compostable. It comes with a black side and a light side. In fall, when we're making cool season beds, we make the bed with the black side up so we get a little bit of help from the sun warming the soil up. In spring and summer, we make beds with the light side up. We make small holes and plant them in there. This suppresses weed seeds from sprouting because they don't get light. It is a huge labor saver. It comes in a 48 inch by 50 foot long piece. You can buy a one pack for $26.95 or a six pack for $134.95. Um, I totally attribute us being able to scale our farm all those years ago because of this. I've used it for over a decade and absolutely love it. And there's a great demonstration on the app too yeah. under the product. Yes, and I didn't say that. Um, so there is a great video on the product that shows you putting it down, and that's true on the soil blocking kit as well. Um, you can go to the product and see a demo of us doing it. This is a reminder, if you wanna enter the $25 giveaway, hit the, buy, the giveaway button now, and that will put you on the list that we will pull from at the end of the show. And we wanna do a pan of flowers behind Oh yeah, you. they wanna show you all the flowers before we get started. Y'all, I mean, there's so much beautifulness here. So I always jumpstart our flower, showing you flowers. Um, we always share about the desiccant packs because you should always purchase the seeds of flowers when you meet the flower. That means you buy the flower seeds as soon as you find out that you wanna actually grow it, right? And so, if you store it properly, they'll last for years. Part of that journey is desiccant packs. This is what you find, you know, when you buy pills and you open tennis shoes, it's absorbing moisture, keeps seeds cool and dry, and they will last for seasons in many, most cases. So before we look at fresh flowers, I wanna run through the flowers, the cool flowers that I direct sow, okay? And I wanna just say a little note about this. 
you will see that there are other cool flowers on our seed packet. It'll say start indoors or direct sow. Remember, I always put the method first that I find the easiest. So there are more than this, but I, I start them indoors because I find it much more successful that way. So let's look at this. First up, oh, these aren't in order. Wait a minute. Are these in order, Susie? But I mean, I would, okay. Yes. All right, so Larkspur, which is one of the most beautiful um, flowers to grow, is direct sown. And this is the mix, but we have several specialty colors. They're all available in here in the app, y'all. We just couldn't show them all. So Larkspur, which has all the beautiful colors. This is called the Southerner's Delphinium. Um, it grows really, really great. We fall plant it. Dill. Um, which this is dill bouquet. Yes, you can eat it, but it is also has a great vase life. This grows over six feet tall in my garden. Um, it has a beautiful, beautiful bloom on it. And then also agristema. That is corn cockle. Um, and this is an easy, I mean, y'all, I always plant all of the direct sown seeds in a bed, the same bed or, or in multiple beds, but I group them together, right? Um, this agristema, I like to think of it as like the Cosmo of spring. You know, it's got that same effect in the garden. It's pretty wispy. And then we have um, Atroplex. Atroplex, you do not grow it for the little teeny, so insignificant flower. Y'all, it's these seed pods that come after the flowers. This is in the spinach family. Deer love it, so you've gotta protect it. It comes in green, and there's a red one that is even more beautiful than this. Um, depending on what you're using it for. So that's Atroplex. And then, of course, good old Bells of Ireland, y'all, the most coveted flower that people want to grow. Yes, we direct sell them in the garden in the fall. And we give you on our seed packets any special instructions like soak before you plant them, um, whatever you're actually doing. I'm being attacked by flowers behind me, y'all. And then this is our giant poppy pod. That one we direct sow. This one we grow for this pod. We don't use the flowers. They only last about 24 hours. But this green pod is amazing in um, arranging work. Then this is the poppy that we use fresh. This is the Iceland um, poppy, which is champagne bubbles. Direct sow it in the fall, y'all. And then look at this one. This is soapwort or saponaria. And this also comes in white. You'll find both colors available here in the app. Um, and this is an amazing filler. It's like little miniature Cosmos. And we have so many bachelor buttons, y'all. Bachelor buttons are one of the earliest flowers to bloom on my farm. They're significant to pollinators. And putting a, three of these blue flowers in any bouquet just pops it up. Um, and so bachelor buttons are another just really great one. Sorry, y'all. Paper sticking. And then this is Orlea, or we call it white lace flower. Kind of looks like Ami Mae, just like Queen Anne's lace, but it's different. See how much bigger the petals are? Love that one, and it does great being direct sewn. Y'all, this is one of about 10 Nigellas, love and a miss. This is my current favorite. This is called Blue Deft, and it is, I mean, the, the fresh bloom is beautiful, but the pod that develops in the center that comes after the fresh flower, really, really useful. And this is the pod on the one that's called Green Marbles. Um, this is also useful. This is a white bloom. There's just so many nigellas. And then lastly, for our direct sown ones, this is Bupleurum. Bupleurum is in demand, whether you're making bouquets for your florist, for whoever. Um, it does not ship well. This is a great, easy grower, and people up to zone five fall plant this, y'all. So it is really cold hardy, so Bupleurum is a great one. Now, we're gonna look at the cool flowers that are still hanging on this year. Look at this, y'all. This is Tweedia. Look at the length on this. This was very early spring planted. That meant it was planted up to eight weeks before my last spring frost. For me, that is like Valentine's Day. And it's so well established. And look at those blue flowers. Pretty amazing. And look at this. They won't stop blooming, y'all. These are our Chinese forget-me-nots. I mean, blue is a flower that is so in demand. And both of those, um, the Chinese forget-me-nots are um, direct sown. 
And then we still have straw flowers. All of these are cool season hardy annuals. This is the peach, which is an amazing bouquet contribution ingredient. And then this is the mix. <coughs> All of these are available in straight colors here in the app, you know, so, but we put them together as the mix. Amazing dried as well as um, fresh. And look at this. These are all still going strong, y'all, out in the garden. And this just started. This is Hellenium, which is known as a short-lived perennial. So we treat it as a cool season hardy annual, a cool flower. And I mean, the colors are absolutely perfect for this time of the year, right? And then, you know, we grow a lot of Rudbeckias. And this is the last one to bloom. This is Triloba. And to build a bouquet around one of these with red and yellow and orange is pretty dead gum amazing. And I have one last cool flag. Yeah, I got this. I want to uh, show it. Okay. So you'll have to go find this in the app. This is a cool flower. Look at this, y'all. This is a mobium. And it is still going. This is the very early spring planting. And one of the things you learn is when you keep the garden harvested hard, that's when stuff grows back, right? We literally had Andrew mow this down with the hedge trimmer. And it's like all of a sudden it's coming back to life. So this is a mobium, which is a fabulous cool flower. So now we're moving into the warm season tender annuals. And it's the stuff that I grow, the midsummer planting um, in the colors that are more, you know, conducive to fall, right? And so Gumphrena is always a big part around here. This is the Audra White. Anything we don't use fresh, we would hang and dry to use for crafts um, and dried flowers all season. This is also Audra. Is this Audra pink? Yeah. Yes. So I'm never sure. It looks purple to me. We use a lot of this in the fall. This is Audra pink. And look how tall this stuff is, y'all. This is, and it dries holding its color. Gumphrena is just a lot of fun. Then this one, look at this. This is the bicolor. Look at the the white dots in the middle. People love this one. Our florists really love this one. I mean, it just creates interest all in the same flower, right? And then, of course, we grow tons of the basil still in fall. This is the cardinal, which has that flatter flower that's a little bit darker color and the stems are darker. So, I mean, we would still love to have lemon, cinnamon, red ruff, purple ruffles, all of them. And then, friends, look at this, our eucalyptus. You know, I try. I say that I'm going to wait until September, but we couldn't wait. Look, this is polyanthemus, and we have this seed in stock, right, Susie? This is, you're going to save this seed and start it in January, okay? Look how long this is. This is my favorite eucalyptus, but you know I love the one I'm with. I mean, this is so amazing. So this is polyanthemus. This is last year's favorite. This was parvula gum. Look how little that... Um, leaf is so very very useful the best drying eucalyptus in my experience too then here's the old standard this is silver dollar you can never have enough eucalyptus to grow it to start harvesting it in the fall is i mean your customers will wait for it all right now we're going to go through a bunch of zinnias look at this y'all this is Zowie. This is the Xenia I don't grow early in the season. I plant it midsummer because this is a color that we want in fall, not in June, right? So Zowie is amazing. And then here's another specialty. This is Uproar, which is a new hybrid out about 10 years ago. These blooms are a color that's no other, but no other Xenia that we have has it, but they're incredibly productive. Um, so we love Uproar. And then my personal favorite Xenia is the little Oklahomas, y'all. Look how little they are. This is what's on my kitchen table most of the time. And this is all the colors together. It's really great when you're making bouquets to have different sizes. And now we're going into the Queen series, which is perfect for fall. How romantic are these? This is the Queen Lime Red. I mean, I have no idea about wedding colors, but I think that Victorian things back, these would be perfect for that. And then this is the lime orange, which you know orange is my favorite color. I mean, they're all muted. So you can put other colors with these to really bring them up. And then look at this, y'all. Lemon peach. How beautiful. And then this used to be my favorite. Lime blotch. 
It's lime with pink, all different kinds of variations of pink inside of it. But it's just really useful, right? I mean, when I say favorite, I mean it's a good seller, <laughs> usually. Um, this is the cactus mix. And you either love or hate cactus senias. They either look old to you or they look interesting. So you'll have to, the, the jury is out. And then this is the Inca cactus. These are all the oranges, um, which, you know, they just have like fluffy petals, right? Like this. That one's getting a little old. And that's the problem with them. Now we're going into the Benaries. This is the most commercially grown zinnia family um, on the planet. And that's because they're the most productive. This is yellow, and this is when I cut it. See how it's still green inside? Not, not like this. See how it's already getting a little brown? All the light colors you have to do that with. And look at this, look at this white, oh my gosh. See how green that is? That's when you cut it, y'all. Do not let it, you're not looking for those, like, see how the little yellow florets are starting to pop? You don't want that. You want to get them before that. This is what you're looking for. Now, pink is not usually a color I'd have in fall, um, but we show all the colors. You know, if you've got, look at that. Pink is the mo most prolific of the whole Benaries line, but they're gorgeous. Here is the color that is amazing for fall, and that is salmon. You know, you can call it whatever color you want. Salmon, blush, it's just really useful. And again, that's how we cut them before they're fully developed. Then this is the deep red. It's really a much darker color and I only plant this one midsummer to bloom in the fall because that's just a dark color. But look at these guys. This is carmine, which I described this one as watermelon. That's kind of the color of this. And I mean, just look at these blooms, y'all. And then this is lilac, the lighter. And you can see how much, how the darker colors are really dark. That's why we, this is the purple, which is a darker version of that. Can show them together? And then here is lilac up here. It's very, it's lighter. It's hard to tell on camera. It is lighter, but they're both kind of in that dark family as wine is. And again, it just really depends on what your market is and what your use is for them. And of course, the orange is the prettiest because that's my favorite color, y'all. Look at that beauty. Totally love it. And then this is the scarlet red in the Benary's Giant. This is like fire engine red. This is what you need to have two tons of for 4th of July, is that color red. And then I really love the coral kind of a fluorescent type color. It's really pretty. And then look, here is the mix. You can get the mix or you can get all the individual colors. How pretty are they? First time for this. And guess what? Who's making his debut today? Harry Balls. How about it, folks? Gumpacarpus Physicarpus. And once we get enough, I'm going to make a wreath and we'll show you how we do that. All of these milkweeds always have aphid, y'all. That's just part of life with them. And I have definitely believe, what we defoliate them, usually there's more, like this should be cut off. Um, we defoliate them to actually reveal the seed pods. And this is the size that I prefer to start cutting them in. And instead of allowing them to get even bigger and they get a little obnoxious looking, it's much more useful, but I think you can definitely fill a five gallon bucket with soapy water and stick the sticks down in there and swish them to get the aphids off if you need to. So experiment with that before you do it. Um, but Gumpacarpus physicarpus is actually a monarch um, host plant. It's a tropical, it is not a native, um, but it does, they'll eat it. And then so, and that's, this is the hairy ball season, right? You know, they will do this until fall. And then look at this, y'all. These are giant marigolds. This is the mix. All the colors are available individually in the app. And marigolds are, were a big part of our farm. Missed and missed. Okay. All right. So we're just moving right on here. Okay. All right. So this is not, we're just bringing up Cosmo Double Click here, right? Because this is a bunch of different Cosmos, but this is what I wanted to show you. I have two bunches here. 
This is what the bunch should look like at a flower farm, mostly in buds, just cracking open, because this is what you want it to look like in your customer's vase at home, right? I had to share this since I know you're all cutting Cosmos right now. This is what it should look like for them, but you should be cutting them when they're just budding up. And you know, I mean, it's nice to have a few that are open, but that's not, you're not selling a whole bucket full of these at a farmer's market, right? But we have like 14 different Cosmos in here. They're a huge fall crop, y'all. And then look at this. How much of this do you think is useful in the fall? This is limelight millet. And um, I mean, I use it from just coming out of the leaves until it gets bigger seed. I mean, it'll get even bigger than this. Um, but this is super useful and commercial customers really love them. Now this is Purple Majesty. And you see that guy in the middle right here that's got yellow pollen all over it? You don't ever want that to happen in your customer's vase. This is a great fall annual grass to grow and we cut it, harvest it when it's just coming out. This is a little bit even longer. I'm looking for one, I don't even have one. Um, so just as it's emerging and they continue to emerge and you want to get them to your customer long before they start getting that pollen all over them. So coxcomb friends, this is red orange or orange red. This is the most productive coxcomb that we grow. It was a big part of our bouquet program for supermarkets. And then this is Kramer's Mix. This is that one that's been hybridized to hold its color the best. I mean, how would this be with those queen zinnias, right? It would be really, really beautiful. So this has rose, burgundy, and lime green in it. Oh. And then look at this. This is that single stem act. And look at all these colors. They're really beautiful, so that means Single stem, one flower, one plant. It's one of those pricey seeds. If you're selling to florists, um, that is a real favorite for them. And then friends, look at this. This is that Jura salmon. Um, this is limited supply seeds. We had this grown for us and um, it's not a bottomless availability. Um, and it's just a really beautiful color and I wanna compare all the oranges. Then this is Chief Persimmon, which is the deepest orange. And then this is the Queen Improved. So I'm gonna put all three of them together so you can see what the difference is in the colors. And there's not a whole lot of difference between Queen Improved and Jura, unless you're a designer or a florist. The, the, the Jura is a much softer salmon, then the Queen Improved is more of an orange, and then of course persimmon is darker. All fabulous fall colors. And look at this. This is Coxcomb Rose. This is like cotton candy, y'all. So very, very beautiful. You want as much of this all spring, all summer that you can actually get. All right, and then we're at Rose. Gold. You can show them. Oh. All right, so this is Crystal Beauty, which the seed is not available currently, but you can get on the wait list to be notified. Um, I mean, this is just a great blush color, right? And then my all-time favorite, we planted this every week, y'all. This is Spring Green. This is another single stem, pricey seed, but we just had a lot of use for it. I mean, they're just, it goes with everything, right? You can use it in bouquets, it's just really, people love this stuff. And it just goes with anything. And then another great fall is this gold. I mean, these last so long in the vase, y'all. They are just great additions. And then this is another one you wanna have for 4th of July as well as for fall, right? This is Higyoku. I'm sure I'm killing that name. But it's got dark foliage. It's really, really pretty. Yes, so we succession plant all of these warm season tender annuals. Sometimes two to seven times. It depends on what you're doing and um, how much volume you need. This is called the Corona. It's the bicolor and it has a really cool mix of some of the blooms are actually two-toned like that. 
and then there's other solids mixed in. These are really a lot of fun. People really, whenever we were at the market where people could pick their own stems, they always went for those. So plumes were always in our top 10 cash crops. This is um, Sunday Gold, which is just a great color. And here's Pampas Plume that so many folks like to grow. The problem that I have with this, um, because Pampas Plume is popular, why? Because it's a cheaper seed, right? They go to seed so quickly, it's really hard to catch them at the proper stage to harvest. So that's the only thing, versus something like this, which is Selway, which is slower to go to seed. This is the salmon, Selway, there it is. This is the salmon, yes really really pretty and y'all know I just love high Z love the stem love the foliage it's really a lot of fun and then this is perhaps it's like that green coxcomb this is sylphid this is two different harvest spots look how tall this stuff is this bloom goes with everything it's just universal you begin to love stuff like that when you're making bouquets and then this is flamingo feather how pretty this stuff is. And this stuff dries great too, y'all. And then we have um, Mahogany Splenda Hibiscus. This is grown for the foliage, not for a flower, y'all. And it is incredible. They probably get 70 stems per plant. You do not need to grow much of this, right? Because you only need one stick of this in a bouquet. It's kind of dark, but it's very, very interesting. It looks like a Japanese maple. Missed. And then... Can we do <clears throat> rooster peppers? Just to find it maybe. Yeah, so you can look these up in the app. We didn't get these added. Um, you know, I talk about the rooster peppers. That's a specialty seed that we offer. Um, this is how you use them. Totally defoliated. Look at that green fruit. This is amazing in mixed bouquets and your florist will love them. What's special about these, see how the foliage just, no matter when you try to even hydrate them, the foliage does not hydrate well. Most peppers, ornamentals, have full, the fruit is all down the stem. These are super easy to strip. You can just hold onto the fruit and strip it off and it exposes the actual fruit. So rooster peppers are amazing, fresh green, fresh red, and then dried for, um, we make wreaths out of them. Um, it's just a lot of different uses. I mean, one grower says cash cow is she all through November. All she does is make hot pepper wreaths. So that's all of our flowers. Now it's time to wrap it up. And friends, remember to stick around um, for the Q&A at the end. And, you know, I just want to give another plug on cool flowers. If you aren't familiar and aware of the cool flower concept, which is the method of planting cool season hardy annuals, you're missing out on a huge family of flowers. It's all the stuff that blooms in early spring and spring and into early summer. So you've got to check that out. Um, so if you remember, we have a really big website called thegardenersworkshop.com where you're going to find um, lots of free resources. There's videos over there. We have blogs. There's a podcast. There's actually two podcasts. Um, there's Field and Garden over there, as well as on your favorite podcast app. And we have Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Um, and the episode that actually dropped yesterday was called Protecting Transplants with a Sun Cap. Um, so we talk about that podcast really addresses the questions that we're just constantly hearing coming in um, to the gardener's workshop. And remember that I am hosting the Ask a Flower Farmer this coming Wednesday, which is 1230 over in Instagram. Um, our handle is Gardener's Workshop Farm. Um, and you'll find me over there answering as many questions as I can. Remember to meet me back here next Friday um, for the live show, 12 noon Eastern time, right inside the app. And next week's theme is to work smarter, not harder. And that's Labor Day weekend, right? So kind of set, I think I'll be sharing some of my tips and tricks. Um, and so now it's time for us to pull the giveaway and we have a winner and I so hope you're here because you have to be here to actually claim it right and it seems like every week the people are here and so this week our winner is Kaylee Santiago Kaylee are you here Santiago you just give us a big shout out in the comments and 
we will drop a $25 credit right into your cart. When you go to check out, it'll just be there ready and waiting. Um, so Kaylee, I hope you're here. So stick around for the live Q&A, and if you're not hanging out, Thanks for joining us, friends. I'm really glad that y'all came, and so glad I got to share all of um, all of our beautiful. Oh, Kaylee's here! Congratulations, Kaylee. Um, so that will be in your cart. Kelly is doing it as I'm talking to you right now, dropping that right into your cart. So have fun and take advantage. The 20% off of the cool flower category here in the app only is good until Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So. Eastern time. All right, so let's take a look at some of the questions. All right, nine weeks until my first frost. Is it too late for me to start my seeds for my cool weather plants? So, yes and no. Um, it really depends on where you are. You can push the limits when you're starting transplants, when you're planting transplants out in your garden versus planting seeds. When you plant transplants out in your garden, they've already sprouted, they've grown into a little transplant, you can take them out to your garden, and if need be, you can use hoops and a rope cover to kind of cuddle them for a while, right? If it gets colder sooner. Our experience here is that fall is lasting even longer than it ever has before, which means you have more time. Um, your only chance would be to immediately start your seeds um, and do your best to grow them up and get them planted outside. And if it's already getting cold outdoors, um, then just think about how you can cuddle them because they need a little bit of warmth to be able to lay down some really great roots. The whole concept is you get stuff in the ground so they can get established. So when they start go into winter, they go dormant that they're established enough to survive dormancy, right, until spring. So it's always best to try to be on time. And now's the time to mark your calendar for next year. When should you be starting your plants? You know what I mean? We all forget unless we have a calendar we're working from. So I would go for it. Um, but I wouldn't put all my eggs into one basket, right? And you're going to just have to do some extra steps to cuddle. All right, what do you mean when you say commercial grower? Does that mean wholesale to designers and florists? That means if you're selling flowers, period. Um, if, if, you're, if it's a business, if you're selling at a farmer's market, if you're selling at a farm stand, selling to florists, selling to designers, selling to supermarkets, if you're getting money for your flowers, you are a commercial grower. Um, and our goal at, for the Gardener's Workshop, our mission is to make more professional commercial growers. What does that mean? It means that people that are growing high quality, consistent flowers and doing it in a professional manner and selling to the trade. Um, so if you're selling your flowers and getting money for them, then you fall into that category. Where you fall on that window of what kind of grower you are um, is another discussion, right? All right, my six to eight weeks before first frost window has passed. Should I pinch my Snapdragon transplants? They're about two to five inches tall. So it sounds like you started seeds. I don't know if they're planted or in the tray. Um, so if you've got transplants and it's your window, I would definitely plant them. I typically don't pinch all the time. I pinch when it's convenient for me. Convenient meaning if I pinch something today, I give them 10 to 14 days to recover from being pinched before then planting them out in the garden. Those are two separate stresses. You know, why double hit him when you can do one at a time and it's not nearly as effective, right? So if there's transplants and they're, you know, if they're five inches tall, for sure plant them. If they're two inches tall, I'd wait till they're five inches tall. Um, but you don't have to pinch them. Pinching is an option that gives you more stems. Getting them in the ground and getting them established is the most important step. You can pinch them. They are planted. Um, I would not pinch them at that small because you're going into winter. Yeah, if they're that small, I would not pinch them. You can pinch in very early spring if you're feeling the need. And my pinch law is 50%. I never pinch all of my plants unless I have to. 50% of the plant or 50% of? 50% of my plants of one color. Yeah, good question. So I, if I have a tray of plants, I typically am pinching half of them um, and planting half pinched, which makes branching happen earlier, and half unpinched, which means those will bloom earlier. So I get a best of both worlds, right? 
is the row cover water permeable? I'd like rain to water for me, yes. Um, so 85% of air, water, and light can penetrate our lightweight row cover. That's not true for all of them. There's all different kinds of weights. Um, and yes, that is the big reason that we use that one is that we do not have to irrigate. Rain um, goes through it. Of course, you always take row cover down when any kind of frozen perception, uh, uh, precipitation is on the way for um, ice or snow. When do you direct Solark Spur? Six to eight weeks before your first fall frost. So for me, I'm mid-November, so I'll probably plant like first of October. What is the vase life for corn cockle? It's surprising. Corn cockle was that flower that kind of looks like a giant Cosmo. They look so light and dainty, uh, but we had excellent vase life. We actually sold those in bunches to florists. Um, so seven to 10 days is pretty much, as long as you are, key here, harvesting them at the proper stage, right? My spring green celosia was very short. Any tips? So if you only planted it one time, um, you just need to keep doing it over and over. A lot of things, stress, sat in the tray too long. If you started it in a cell pack instead of soil blocks, celosia really resents being root bound. Um, not enough water, not enough nutrition, so there's a lot of things. You know, you have to plant stuff over and over, two or three times in a season, and then I, my rule is I plant stuff for three seasons before I kick them to the curb. Um, but yeah, I've had short spring green before, and I've got spring green right now that's probably 36 inches. So you just have to find out what the sweet spot is for your actual garden. Um, so when is your next class? What do you think that is? When is your next class? So our online courses are now on demand. That means that they're available 24-7. Um, Wait, they're only in person already. Yeah, and so we are, I did an in-person here on the farm that's come and gone. There's no more of those scheduled at this point in time. Um, and then of course, every June, typically the end of the June, we have an open farm that people come from all over the place. And we're just really thrilled about that. All right, do most cool season seeds need to be refrigerated? And this will be my last question, I think. Um, so all of the varieties of cool season hardy annuals that we grow and sell do not require cold treatment, right? They don't need cold stratification or any special handling, but they do benefit from just being kept cold and dry, right? And we feel like storing them in the freezer and then bringing them out and we're gonna plant them says to them, hey, wake up, you're coming out of cold um, and it's time to actually, um, that they're gonna sprout. And so that's the reason why. And then we have one last question that I will answer. Are you and Suzanne twins? <laughs> no, we are not. Funny enough, our mother was an identical twin with her sister, um, but Suzanne and I, I'm four years older than Suzanne is, even though we look a lot alike. There's no question. I have been asked if I was her mother before. We were at a show in a bathroom <laughs> once. <laughs> Yeah, that's when Suzanne was still doing her hair and I was already a gray top. So friends, thank you so much for coming. Um, and remember, over on our website, we have a lot of online courses from you know seed starting to flower, starting a flower farm. To, there's just a wide variety over there of classes that you can purchase anytime. And um, thank you for joining us here today and congratulations to our prize winner. And I'll see you on Wednesday and then next Friday. And remember friends, if you're interested in my club, you can find out more about that over at thegardenersworkshop.com.